welcome to our game show. So we're doing an improv game show this morning. Uh, we have some contestants standing by who are ready to join us. Um, to give you a little bit of heads up, this is an improv game show. So our contestants know some of what's gonna happen, but the more you interact, the less they know. Um, so you can get as creative as you want, add some prompts in the comments below. We will get them on their toes and responding to all of your comments as we go. So uh, the more you interact, the more this game show gets really weird and really silly and really fun. So join us as we're going live for this improv game show. Um, and as we go through the different games, we also want you to be able to participate and take these games home with you. Um, so we'll teach you the games, we'll teach you how you can do them at home, and we'll play them right here on your screen play along with us, add your comments, and we'll get going. Awesome, we'll give people a, a quick second to join us. Amazing. Awesome, so if you're just joining us, my name is Alexa, I'm gonna host your game show and get us started here. Um, and then as we go, we'll add in some contestants who are going to be on their toes doing improv with us this morning. So let's go ahead and meet those contestants. They don't know which order they're coming on in, so it's gonna be a really fun surprise. On your mark, get set, meet Rob. In three, two, and one. Hello, everybody, I'm Rob. As previously mentioned. <laughs> uh, what else do I say here? Just a little bit about myself. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, we already covered that I'm Rob, and I'm the volunteer coordinator at Flying Horse Farms, but today my only job is to make Graham, Bells, and Abby, and Alexa, and all of you at home break character and laugh as much as humanly possible. Fair enough. All right. Meet our next contestant. We have Abby coming in and live in three, two, and one. Here she comes. Hello, everyone. I'm Abby and I am the camper and family liaison at Flying Horse Farms. Um, I enjoy it frolicking in forests, um, bad puns, which might come into play here, um, and making a, a little bit of a fool of myself. So excited to do all of that potentially now. <laughs> wow. Amazing. And last but certainly not least, we'll find out. And two for the price of one. Here we go. In three, two, one. Woo! Here they are. Why, hello there. The name's Duke Sherwood, Roller Coaster Tycoon. So glad to be with y'all this morning. Thanks for having me on. Oh, wow, what thanks for being here, Duke. <laughs> yeah, no, that's all I got. Hey, everybody. It's Graham. I'm the sous chef and camp operations coordinator at Flying Horse Farms. And uh, I've never played a game before. I don't know what shows are, but I'm, uh, I'm so excited to be shown the way. Ooh, yikes. Abby, did you yeah. like that bad pun? Does that qualify? I thought it was like a good 10 out of 10. Pretty great. Okay, okay. Yeah. Starting strong. And I am Bells. Uh, I'm the activities coordinator at camp. Um, I am an avid game and show watcher. Mm. Um, I actually was on a game show once. I went on the newlyweds game. Um, however, I was not a newlywed. I wasn't even wed. Um, so it was just me. Um, but fortunately, because it was just me, I knew all the answers. So I won. There you go. Yes. Hot competition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so out of you. <laughs> awesome. Well, you have met our crew. Um, we are going to kick this game show off with a, a very easy game to get us started um, and a really great one for you guys to play at home. So this is a game of yes and. Um, this is a great way to warm up your, dip your toes into improv in the first place. Um, so yes and is a trick of getting a story to keep going by simply adding the phrase yes and to the beginning of a sentence. So we'll start a story and then the next person's going to have to pick it up by saying yes and, and then they will have to keep that story rolling. So if you have anything that you're hoping to see in this story happen, um, pop it in our comments and we will do our best to get those to our um, lovely game show contestants today. So pop some 
things that you want included in the story and they're gonna have to incorporate them. Um, so keep them on their toes. <laughs> Great luck to these contestants and they are gonna get started. Whew. All right, well, we keep shifting. It looked like I was first. Uh, so I guess I will get us started with a story of my own. This is a story about a vacation when I was 11 years old and it was my family and we were going all the way out to New Mexico. We were gonna go visit some national parks and we, we stopped off to get some road snacks uh, in Albuquerque right before we entered the Cibola National Park. Uh, and we ran into inside of the, the Albuquerque Turkey Jerky Emporium, Abby Rieger. Uh, do you remember what happened after we ran into each other in the yeah, Pringles aisle? Yeah. And you, um, Rob, you and your family ran into um, some people who were alien enthusiasts that heard uh, New Mexico was a very interesting place to learn more about, um, you know, aliens and how they how they came to Earth. Um, and so after that, you, um, as you learned more about the aliens, um, they actually took you to a special area. Do you remember where they went, Graham? Yeah, actually, I was also in Albuquerque, New Mexico, or as mm -hmm. I like to say, Albuquerque. Uh, my family and I were taking the train from Cleveland to Los Angeles and had a half hour stop off um, in Albert QQ. And so we also like, we, we got off the train, we went for a run. Um, and as I recall, the alien enthusiasts that we met were going to, uh, Arches National Park. Um, and their rationale for that, well, actually at best bells, would you just tell us a little bit about why Arches was their destination? Yes. Um, because, so it was their destination because interestingly enough to get there, you didn't take a train. Um, you took an alien made hover train and they were really excited to ride that. And the snacks along the way, um, were actually, oh my gosh, um, were really tasty. And Rob, you had had them before. I can't remember though, but you've told me about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had them on a different trip. This one, we didn't go to Arches, right? So obviously we stopped at the Albert mm -hmm. QQ, Turk Q, Jerk Q Emporium. Um, and, but, but, but all that aside on the, on the tram, the alien tram to Arches National Park, they've got a lot of really cool bonbons. Um, have you seen Harry Potter, Bell? You know the cart that comes through and, and the, you know, there's candy on it, there's the hopping frogs, they have two of those. Uh, it's all like alien candy though, so it's like not my flavor. Like, like I'm more of a like fruity, sweet, kind of sour guy. Um, Abby, you're into weird foods though. You liked what they had on the cart. What, what did you enjoy? Yeah, I think my favorite was, um, it was kind of like that astronaut ice cream um, but right. the, it just kind of floated in the air. So it wasn't, you know, you had to kind of like grab it, reach out. Um, and you got a couple different, you know, all the flavors were floating in there. I think, um, my favorite might've been breakfast pizza as a flavor. Um, that was a pretty interesting, mm -hmm. um, piece of floating food. Um, there was that one I didn't really like bells. Do you remember I was telling you about it? Yes. And that flavor surprisingly was vanilla you said that um the the vanilla tasted too vanilla -y and that you were disappointed with the um with the intensity of the flavor in in such a seemingly bland ice cream that's true yeah and uh if i recall um correctly also um, Abby, with your time snatching food out of the air. Um, well, since you didn't like the vanilla, once you got to your destination um, with the alien enthusiasts and actually like started to meet some in-person aliens, if, I, if I'm remembering this correctly, you decided it would be like a classic earth prank to um, share your least favorite flavor with these aliens from other parts of the galaxy, the solar system, the universe. Um, and so, Rob, do you remember how the aliens felt about vanilla astronaut ice cream? 
oh, do I remember how they felt? Yeah, it was a whole crap. I'm sure the whole world remembers this. I probably don't have to go into much detail about the ice cream mm -hmm. alien debacle of 2017. But for those of you who live under a rock, I will. I'll talk a little bit about it. So like I said, uh, I was 11 years old and it's 2017. Not sure how that happened. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, Abby shows up at Arches National Park and meets the aliens. But what we didn't know was that the aliens had actually come from the planet of ice cream, ice cream at the door. And in their culture, it's not, it's not a show of disrespect, but it's a show of apathy almost to offer such a bland ice cream to, to lead with, I mean, basically just a cup of snow. You know, like that's what you brought to the ice cream people. Uh, and I mean, it was the whole thing until we ended up getting them Rocky Road. I really thought we were gonna be in a world of ice cream hurt. Brain freeze for everyone. Mm. Uh, but mm. the good news is obviously we made it out of that. Um, we did get them their Rocky Road. I think it was Briars. Is that right, Abby? What, what brand Rocky Road? Um, you know, I think it was actually Baskin Robbins. Um, but, you know, I think that's what Arches National Park is famous for. Um, they're also really famous for, obviously, their rock formations. Um, so we yeah. went on a pretty, pretty long hike with the aliens afterwards. I don't know if you, were, you remember that, but probably about maybe 20, 30 so. miles into the hike, uh, we decided it was time to, you know, stop, maybe cook some dinner for the day. And it was so great that um, we were able to ask Chef G um, what to make for dinner. You know, we wanted to give our best showing of, you know, human food. Um, Chef G, do you remember what we ended up uh, cooking? Yeah, well, at this point, actually, remember, I just had a half hour layover in Albert QQ with my family. So we were back on the train just motoring right along, getting into sunny SoCal. I remember um, using the train pay phone because this was back in 2017. Um, oh, right. And you, I think, were at the top of one of the arches um, and used the payphone that they had there. And it thankfully accepted alien currency. But yeah, we just had, I remember having just a delightful conversation, Abby. Um, and if, yeah, I think that um, my recommendations based on kind of the uh, local flavors available, wow, we look real frozen. I hope we're not, um, is that we concocted a menu of um we crumbled up a bunch of astronaut ice cream on top of some piles of red rock dust um and just made the most like chalky uh dry bowl of not you can't even call that food but um bells do you remember the alien word for food i do yeah, the alien word for food is glubberdy ooshbach. Glubberdy ooshbach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, we're back. Sorry, we were real frozen for a moment. Did you all hear the alien word for ice cream? Yeah. Uh, can you repeat it again? Yeah, can you just say it again. Oh, oh, you heard it, but you would like me to say it again. Yeah, I just want to make sure I know how to pronounce it correctly. Uh, yeah, wonderful. Um, yeah. I'm, in I'm out of practice, right so I, I hope it comes out clear. Yeah, yeah. the dialect's a little <clears throat> muddy. Glabberty Ufba. Oh! Yeah. Does it have the, to be that guttural, or is that your accent? <laughs> through? Uh, no, the pronunciation, half the pronunciation comes from the spit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that did feel bad. That felt good. Well, live on different planets is because of, of um, because their language depends so much on, on, you know, spit and saliva is they need that distance. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and with that, I think, I think we've come to the conclusion of yes. And, mm -hmm. uh, a great story. I learned so yeah, much. That was a I think our alien train tram derailed a couple times, but Ooh. we were in that boat. It was great. We all contributed ideas and really just committed to each other's thoughts and ran with them. Mm. Yeah, I loved it. Had a great That's time. what improv yeah. is all about. It really is. Yeah, we all worked together on that. Thank you all for listening. Um, and, and 
to just joining us on that wild journey. Um, so we're gonna play another game here. Um, this is maybe one of our favorite games here. Um, so this is called Convince Abby. And it is specifically Convince Abby because Abby is, Abby is one of the hardest people How to convince. You describe it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she has very high standards. Um, I once tried to convince her that for color out, we should replace the water in the fire hydrant with with paint. And she said, no, that's not colorful enough. Really? Yeah, yeah. Whoa, Abby, mm -hmm. I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she didn't even, she didn't even take it to the next person because she was like, no, it's not good enough. So very high standards, um, very hard to convince of ideas and that you are right. So we are now going to play Convince Abby and this game, the goal of this game, there's gonna be a question and we all are all going to answer that question and we need to convince Abby that our answers are correct. Mm -hmm. And I just hope we can do it. Are you guys up for the challenge? Abby, what do you think? I mean, I'm ready to get you to know, the answer. You know, I'll do my I'm, I'm hoping that you guys come with the hard facts and have really thought through um, your, your reasoning before you bring it to me. So uh, my first question for you guys. Hope so ready. Okay, so my, the first question is, what is the record number of cartwheels that Dr. Barb has done in a row? Feel free to raise your hand the record you have the answer. Rob, that's a, a pretty quick uh, turnaround. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So I Googled this one before coming on because I thought that this might have been a question. And if Google is correct in it, almost always, uh, the, the record number is 14 cartwheels. 13 and a half, mm. but I'm going to give it to her because she was on the down flip of the last one. Be Bell seems to disagree. Let's, uh, let's hear from Bell's. Shocking. Well, I disagree for two reasons. One, um, I know from actually from talking to Dr. Barb that it is humanly impossible to do that many cartwheels in a row. You would become too busy and therefore not be able to continue cartwheeling. Um, secondly, half a cartwheel is not a cartwheel. Therefore, you should not round up to 14. And um, in that same conversation, yeah, high five. No. <laughs> in that same conversation where she told me um, that you can't do 14 cartwheels, um, she also told me that her, her personal record is 12. So from the source, 12. Yeah. Seems Thank reliable. You time. Grandma, what do you have to say? Primary sources are often, yeah, I'm, I'm often, often misled. Misled. Memory is a fickle thing. Rob, I'm just going to move right on by uh, you interrupting me because I couldn't really tell what you said anyway. But uh, yeah, I don't feel mad. I feel disappointed right now um, at the just like the astonishing lack of faith in our esteemed medical director. Um, as we all know, Dr. Barb is one of the most like just like flat out magical human beings um that i have ever met that i think has ever walked this earth and so i have it on good authority that uh since she was but a child um you know just roaming the the beautiful uh netherlands hills um she started cartwheeling then and in fact has not stopped since um so that, this is thousands, this is thousands that we're talking about, but there isn't an, an exact answer because she is continuing to cartwheel at this very moment. So uh, unknowable, Abby. It's an, an interesting concept. Feeling? Yes. Well, well, I do feel that Dr. Barber is metaphorically always cartwheeling. Um, I have it on good authority. I, I checked with our friends that um, the Guinness World Record book of 2008, when this record was set, and it is in fact 32 cartwheels. You're all incorrect. Jeez, dang it. Come on, give me a record. Barb. 
Do you own the Guinness World Records book of 2008, just like already, or did you have to buy it for this? Um, I actually memorized it back in 2008. I keep a, a mental knowledge of all of them just so I can fact check. Yeah, no, the, I mean, it clearly comes in. That seems like a lot of. So we, Indeed, we have yeah, a. Yeah, and a really just effective rate of storage in your brain. I think so. Sorry, Abby. Sorry, no, yeah, this is your game, go for it. So we have a Facebook user submitted a question for you all to consider. Um, how old is Tuba? Wow, there's a to be put on his cake last going. year. G, would you like to go first? I would be thrilled to, Abby. Thanks for taking my call. Long time listener, uh, second time answerer. Um, yeah, so I actually tuned in when Bells went live to read the story of Tuba. And if I'm remembering correctly, um, Sam, right? The camper mm -hmm. Sam, it was their first summer. And I think it was the first summer of Flying Horse Farms or the first season of Flying Horse Farms. So um, thinking back to like 2010, 11 era, I'm gonna say Tuba is 10 years, three months and 15 days old. Bell, see, that, that seems pretty factual, yeah. seems pretty big. Right rooted in fact, but Belle seems to, mm -hmm. to disagree a little bit. Let's let's hear from her. That's incorrect. Tuba was was the biggest fish in the lake 10 years ago. Oh. Yep. And so Tuba is much older than that. And Tuba is the oldest and biggest fish in the lake. And Tuba is magical and will live for so long. And Tuba is I believe 100 and 114 years old. That's pretty convincing. That's a magical number. Did read it directly. So she, I think, would have pretty, pretty first-hand knowledge. Rob, what do you, what do you think? I am strictly going based off of the only authority on this, and that is strictly that there were 32 candles on Tuba's birthday cake this year. Um, not that Bells or Graham would know because they didn't show up to Tuba's birthday party. Real cool. I was there. I brought a gift. I, bro, I have a clarifying. Listen, I sent Tuba a really nice card. Are fish years the same as dog years? Like dog years kind of deal? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. I'm sorry, I actually don't that? know the answer to that. They were fish candles, though. So I believe it was 32 like fish, fish years, years, which should allow me to then, you know, convert to whatever that is in human or dog years, if you want to know. So what, what's the conversion to human years? To human years, I do think a one fish year is, I just don't think that's right, because one fish year is 3.62 human years. And if he was 32, just doing the quick math, that you're off by a factor of 11. Right? I don't know. You tell me. Well, I'm just doing the. I mean, I'm just doing the math right here on my on my graphing calculator uh, that I keep next to my desk for volunteer stuff. And yes, that translates to exactly 116.293246833 years. Human. Rob, unfortunately, I think you might need to get a new calculator because Bell's is correct. It's a TI-84, though. Oh, I it. Dang it. Nice job, Bells. I keep the stabby. I'm impressed. Abby, I've never it. convinced you before. Yeah, whatever. Put this one down in the record books. Longest streak, though, right here. Still yeah, haven't convinced her. What up? All right, I think we have one <laughs> last question for today. What is the name of the fairy who stained the rope course this year? Oh, easy. Oh, I don't I don't know. Go ahead, Graham. Yeah, Abby, I would love to tell you about this. Um, so it was actually two fairies who stained the ropes course this year. Um, they're really good friends of mine. They usually have a lot of business to attend to in their home nation of Andalasia. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they were just like, needed a little break from the the everyday happenings there and came over to visit the premises at camp um, and do some work for us. So it was, in fact, the Tooth Fairy and Molar Man. Ooh. 
What a concept. Rob, we'll, we'll jump to you. Yeah, I mean, I just don't think that's possible because the day that the ropes course was stained, I was at Disney World with Molar Man and, and the Tooth Fairy and pretty sure Orlando was pretty far away from the ropes course, Graham. I don't have the correct answer though. Dude, they're fair. I just know it wasn't those two. No, it, no. Unless they were two places at once, we were having a great time. We were in Magic Kingdom. Bells, what do you think? I don't think that it was the Tooth Fairy or Molar Man because I lost a tooth that day. What? Um, yeah, just like you went fishing on Tuba's birthday, Bells. That's not important. Despicable. Um, but I remembered that I found a note they left on the ropes course, um, and it was signed Michelle and Dottie. So I think it was Michelle and Dottie. Those don't seem like traditional fairy names, but who knows? It could be. Rob, do you uh, have you thought more on it or? After hearing all of the facts, recounting the information that I have, which again is very limited. I was in Orlando, Florida on PTO, hanging with my friends. But I think I have, I think I have a memory of the Tooth Fairy and Muller Man saying that their friend Gretchen would actually be the one who was staining the ropes course while we were on vacation. I've met Gretchen. She's a a lovely fairy. Mm. Oh, oh, really? You think she has the, the staining skills to uh, help with the rope course? Might. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, um, unfortunately, none of you are correct. Um, yeah, it was actually two fairies um, that David, you know, shared with me. And they actually asked to not be named unless you were able to give the, their correct names. Um, so we're going to go ahead and keep their identity hidden for now. Um, Whoa. Wow. Maybe the next cool. time the, the ropes course is stained, you'll be able to learn. But since you weren't able to tell me, I, I can't really share that information with you. Right. Yeah. Well, no, we respect their privacy. We understand. We understand. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, but I think that's it Rob, for uh, convincing me. I think Bells kind of is the winner, but really um, two out of three, no one could convince me. Um, so maybe yeah. I'm still the winner. I'm not really sure. And no, I won. Well, Rob, well, let's remember Turn that Rob is the Abby of anything. So Rob maintains an unbroken streak. That's true. Hey, you hear that crowd cheering my name? <laughs> Woo! Me neither. Uh, oh, excellent. Okay, let's uh, let's let's switch it up a little bit and uh, play another, you know, fact-based game. Um, nothing subjective here, just purely the data. I have it right here on my graphing calculator um, and that I use for um, chef stuff. And uh, this is the game of favorites. Um, so our contestants today all submitted their favorite things for a few categories. Um, and so we as a pool, nobody but me is privy to this information of whose is whose. Uh, so, Yes, I am now the Abby. How the tides have turned. Um, so yeah, we're gonna just kind of go. I think we can play this um, one of two ways. Actually, two of two ways. We could switch it up in the middle. I think we could um, read all of one person's favorite things and try to guess who that one person is. Or second way, we could um, read all of the favorite things in a category and then try to match which one is whose. Uh, contestants, do you, yeah, maybe one or two to cast a vote? We can also switch it up. Wow. Great, oh. cool. Rob, oh, nice. <laughs> cool, Rob's streak <laughs> of being chosen remains unbroken, and we will read every submission for a category and then try to play some matching games and, and say whose is whose. Um, cool, so let's just jump right on into it. Here we will start with favorite camp activities. So I'll read out the favorite activities that were submitted. We'll have perhaps one minute of discussion and then uh, reveal the facts behind it all. Okay, so favorite camp activities submitted by us, your contestants. One person said archery. One person said cabin chats. One person said Color O, Color Olympics. One person said showering after Color Olympics. And one person said memory walks. 
And I know what you're saying, Graham, that was one, two, three, four, five responses. And that just plum doesn't add up. Oh, it's because our producer, Alexa Donner, has also thrown hers into the mix. So uh, there may be some mystery ones that we can't place because they're Alexis. Okay, so again, archery, cabin chats, color row, showering after color row, and memory walk. Any uh, initial instinctual guesses of whose is whose? Cabin chat. It's either guess. you or Rob. Yeah, my gut also says say Graham is cabin chat. I think mm -hmm. Bells is archery. I was also gonna say Bells is archery. I mm -hmm. think I think Alexa is either color or showering after color. Yeah. What'd you say? I thought G was memory walks, but now I'm thinking so maybe color. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. I'm or gonna remain impartial. I'm not gonna what okay. Rob? I was thinking maybe you were color row. Based on based on nothing really. Uh well her face her face kind of changed a little bit though. Mm. She's More usually really good at not being like <laughs> Ooh, I think spicy. did we just lock it in? Did we, did we peg her? Color row. It I is not color to color. lock it in. Abby Rieger. Nope. Abby, what was your favorite? What I is it? Do you want to give it away? I said cabin chat. Cabin oh. chat. Abby's cabin chat. That's delightful. Which means I am not cabin chats, though I did okay. consider that because they are one of my favorite things to do at camp. Bells, are you Archer? So great guys. Bells, are you? Am I Archery? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Well identified. I don't think any uh, One any for three. For Rob. Yeah, what do you think was my favorite part of camp? I think yours might be showering at color row. Are we all unanimous on showering post color row? Totally is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nice. G are yeah. you cool. did you cool, just cool. memory walks? Yeah, I for sure did. I love going on memory walks. They're so special. Which leaves for our producer, Alexa Donner. Color Row itself. Wow. Strong work. Honestly, with such deliberation well, and such dissent to begin, you really locked it in by the end, team. Great work. Nice okay, let's job. move on. Thanks, Here we go. G. Favorite. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cruising right along. Um, favorite childhood toy. Some real uh, real winners here. Um, we have my blankie, American Girl dolls, um, my rag doll, which is more specifically a Raggedy Ann doll, a plastic fish named Slugger, and Polly Pocket dolls. Any Ooh. initial guesses? We have my blankie, American Girl dolls, uh, rag doll, Raggedy Ann, plastic fish named Slugger, and Polly Pocket dolls. I don't know why, but the plastic fish named Slugger makes me think Big Ray. No. I was going to say it was you, so. Uh, uh, no, I don't play with plastic fish. Give me the real deal or give me nothing. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Playing with the hmm. yeah. This one is hard. Yeah. Graham, is the plastic fish named Slugger yours? <laughs> I was thinking that too. It'll just say it right now. Yeah, it was specifically like a backyard. It like stayed in the garage, and I think you could fill it up. Like you could squeeze it and put it in a bucket of water, and then like release, and it would fill up with water, and then you could squirt with it. Um, yeah. Oh man, so many fond memories of Slugger. I think the blanket is Rob. I all the blankie. Uh, the blankie. You I'm mean? sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my blankie. It's blankie. I carried it around for yeah, no. too way too old. I was like whatever the Charlie Brown character That's is. Linus. 
Lionel? Lionel. Not Linus. Is it, is, is it Lionel? Lionel. <laughs> no, it's Lionel. 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 Okay. Cool. Okay, so we've got Polly Pocket dolls, Raggedy Ann, and American Girl dolls. Bell's Raggedy Ann. Polly Pocket. Abby pa Polly Pocket? No. You were American Girl dolls? I was. Wow. Bell's your Raggedy Ann doll. Ooh, and then Alexa's yeah. Polly Pocket. Raggedy. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And Alexis probably pockets. Yeah. So were those like the little plastic ones that actually were like pocket sized? Uh, they were the ones with like rubber clothes. So they were like, mm, like three to four inches tall oh, yeah. and they had rubber clothes. And my friend and I used to call them rubber dolls instead of Polly Pockets. And it was the best thing ever. Those were. Okay. I had them back when they were the little like close them, they fit in your pocket, Polly Pockets. Mm. Mm -hmm. TBT. That's pretty fun. Yeah. There was a long time of my childhood when I like really loved miniature stuff and those were definitely like pretty cool. Okay, any closing thoughts? We'll move right on to uh, the I next almost category. Did, I almost did my book of the quarters for this because that's how lame of a kid I was. Do you remember when they were like, hey, we're gonna make quarters for all the 50 states. I collected all of them and I wanted that and I like that was a prize. I love that. That's not lame. Okay, Heck well, thank yeah. you. I needed to hear that, team. 15 years later. Yeah, okay. that's awesome. I collected 10 years. <laughs> you were cool as a kid, Rob. No one else around me knew it, though. Okay, Very great. Awesome. Enough about you. More about all of us. Next category is favorite Disney movies. We have The Parent Trap, Coco, the Emperor's New Groove, Up, and Hercules. Wow, what an all-star list. I would happily, yeah, I would happily watch any of these today. Parent Trap, Coco, Emperor's New Groove, Up, Hercules. I think Parent Trap is Alexa. No, I think, whoa, wait. Hercules or the Parent Trap is Alexa, I think. I feel good about giving Alexa That's the Parent Trap because it seems like where her, I'm gonna say conniving as a compliment side comes from, you know, like early exposure to the Lindsay Lohan twins. Mm. I'm honored, but that's incorrect. Dang. <laughs> is it Abby? Is the parent trap Abby? Oh yes, it is. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Bell's you see Emperor's new crew? Is who the Emperor's New Groove? I have Bells. Are you the Emperor's New Groove? And Alexa, are you Hercules? Hero to hero, just like that. Yeah, I love Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. Sweet. And I'm for sure Emperor's New Groove. Uh, I think it's the most underrated Disney movie. I love it. Nice one. Amazing. Okay. Which leaves so Brandon, that Coco cool. and Up. Yeah. Any thoughts there? And honestly, two movies that pack a similar kind of emotional mm -hmm. wallop. Holy smokes. Yeah. Uh, movie night this weekend? I don't know. I feel like we got a list of five great ones. Let's power through it. That's true. Okay, what's well, the last question? No finishing guesses. Robin will remain shrouded in mystery. <laughs> Coco I think up. We already know the answers. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and Belle's got it. I'm Coco. Yeah. Robert is up. I'm up. Great. Love it. Okay, let's just wrap this game up with one final category, which is perhaps my favorite one. And all of the answers to this one are mine. So you don't even have to guess. It is. Favorite camp meal. We have Stampot Night, mm. Ham and Cheese Sammies with Tomato Soup, Ooh. Camp's Giving Dinner of Fall 2K19, Tacos with a bunch of, bunch of exclamation marks, and Brunch specifically, The Bacon is This Person's Favorite. One more time, it's Stampot Night. Refresh your memory, that's the mashed potatoes, some chorizo, some uh, onion gravy. Mm. Uh, ham and cheese Sammy's with tomato soup. Check out Cooking with Chef Wes and G. Um, Camp's Giving Dinner, 
fall 2K19. We got all the fixins plus the turkey and the beef. Taco night, literally everything, especially if we got homemade chimichurri. And brunch, the bacon is this person's favorite. Just kidding, you can guess. They, they all are my favorite, but I did not submit all of these. Hmm. This is a tough one. Mm -hmm. This is. Yeah. Rob, did you, is yours ham and cheese Sammy's with tomato soup? I feel like you would say the word Sammy's. I would say the word Sammy's. I do also prefer Sandos or Sandy's, uh, but that is not me. Rats. I should clarify, it's on my graphing calculator as sandwiches. Uh, <laughs> so that interpretation was mine. I apologize for the added lens of filtration here. That I get for trying to read too much into it. <laughs> yeah, that's a great guess, great deductive reasoning. Rob, are you tacos? I am not. I think Abby is tacos. I am tacos. I do love Ooh. tacos. Okay. Mm. Graham, are you Stampot? Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> Stampot is my number one till I die Stampot every day. So we've got Camsgiving, brunch, and to really lock down who's ham and cheese Sammy's. Bellman is a star. I am a star, thank oh, you. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, well, we won't be dealing with that for the next week. <laughs> uh, I, some poems I am, have been I am here. winning so far. I would like oh, to say man. that. So objective this is producer. Accurate. This is me. accurate. Mm -hmm. Um, electric uh, camps giving. I, I think. I think Alexa is bacon. <laughs> nice try. I think Alexa's brunch. The bacon one. But yeah, me too. Well, yeah. 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 Sure enough. Mm -hmm. Give her an Oscar. Who <laughs> is this? <laughs> What's happening here? When did this become the Step Bellman show? Hi, Becca Wagner. Oh Thank you for expecting <laughs> And Bellman appreciates you lifting her up. And yes, uh, mine is correctly brunch. So that leaves us with. I expect an Oscar. Thanksgiving. Wow. Bells, is yours the ham and cheese Sammy's? Ham and cheese sandos? Yeah, that's Those are tasty. Mm. Those are, yeah. Because all I think on ropes it would come down and it would be right there and I'd just- Tucked in a little plate. Mm. The best. It's very good. And I would eat it and think, oh, I'm a star. I deserve an Oscar. Oh boy. Like that. <laughs> Yo, know, I live Already with Bell. This is what I have to deal with 24 <laughs> seven, not even on video calls now. Oh, okay. Uh, stop. Dang. Okay, so that means that Robert was nice. What did you say? Okay. Cool. Great game all around. Hey, thanks everybody for rolling with the fun awkwardness of all four of us being on the screen and talking over each other and then like stopping. I think it's like I think it's going great. I just like to acknowledge that I think we're all doing a great job. Maybe we Not all, all of us can be stars, but I think maybe. Yeah. You don't sound sure. convinced, Bell. <laughs> <laughs> what? Let's I play mean, a new game. How about we play a new game? We play a new game. Yeah. Let's just do it. Argue, How about perhaps, Bells? Oh, oh, is it time for the spy game? I think it's yeah, time. Let's play the spy oh, game. all right. Let's do the spy game. All cool. right, so for the spy game. So this is this is a very fun game. So for the spy game, we are going to um have if we have a few prompts. Um and so for this. Um, we are all going to have a prompt in each, there are three rounds. And so we all have a prompt except for one of us who is a spy. And so 
Um, for each prompt, we are going to either, um, they're going to have us do something. So it might be to hold up a number of fingers or make a facial expression. Um, and so for each prompt, we're going to do that. Um, the person who doesn't have the prompt is going to know what they need to do. So they're going to know that they need to hold up a certain number. They need to hold up a number of fingers, but they don't know what the prompt is. Um, so, for example, a prompt might be, how many s'mores do you eat at a campfire? And you need to hold up a certain number of fingers. So we'll give some time to think about it and we'll go three, two, one, hold up your number of fingers. The person who doesn't have a prompt is just going to randomly hold up a number of fingers. And so if we're all holding up however many, you know, s'mores we eat at a campfire, and then Abby is holding up zero fingers, we're going to go, Abby, you don't eat any s'mores at a campfire? And so she, Abby is going to have to say, well, no, I don't. I, I don't like s'mores. And we're, we're going to have to figure out if she is telling the truth or if she is a spy. And so we can do that to anyone until we all decide if someone is a spy or not. I love it. Does that makes sense to everyone? Sure does. All right. I love it too. And it also kind of reminds me of like playing mafia or werewolves or chupacabra, like any of those games where one per like you're trying to figure out who's who, but like such mm -hmm. a low barrier to entry, you can just like play this really quick with your friends and family. So yeah. thanks for, thanks for leading us through this bells. Of course. So for this first round, we are all going to hold up a number of fingers. So we all have our prompts here at home. One of us does not have a prompt. All right. So read your prompts. All righty, three, two, one. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Not a yeah. while yeah. here. All right, so how many hours on the toilet each day? Well, maybe I can just, you know, convince you of my non-spiness um, by arguing to the point of my one. You know, I've got morning ablutions and uh, that usually, you know, takes anywhere from less than one hour to one hour. And then uh, just in case anything happens during the day and I just need a little break to sit on the can, adds up to one hour. That's why I put up a thumb. Mm. Yeah, I, used, I just use the bathroom as a place to relax. I'll just sit on the toilet and just Heck yeah. Relax. So that's mm -hmm. why I did why I did two hours. I don't really know. I don't add it up, but an, an estimate. I would like to though point out there. I kind of think you might be a spy. Yeah, Robin asked a little late. Sure did. They watched our they response did. Yeah. for sure. Are they both spies? <laughs> they straight yeah. up here. Yeah. Uh so just allow, allow yeah. me to share my name here. I think there's a lag. One. Uh, -huh. uh two. Sure. I don't think it's that like I've ever timed it and been like, like I don't think I verge closer to three hours than I do two hours, but I think one hour doesn't fully capture the amount of time I like to spend on my phone. So I went with two. I felt like in the, because if I do one, now everyone's thinking like, well, it's probably less than one, right? And that doesn't feel fair because it's definitely more than one. So two. Seems like you're overcompensating your answer. Could be true. Like you could just say, you know, like I think it's just... about one. And that's my explanation. Okay. You think it's about one? Yeah. Well, one of us is lying through our I teeth. Think what? I, think I kind of think I. I think... What? <laughs> I thought you just said Abby was the spy. I was getting ready to agree. <laughs> I'm not the spy. I'm not the spy. I'm not the spy either. For... I'm the spy. I don't poop for two hours. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a very quick pooper. Mm. Nice one. I, I'm wrong. just glad, though, because I almost went with a much right. bigger number. It was very <laughs> obvious. <laughs> More uh, hours yeah, like on five or six off, I always say. Yeah. Uh, I just set up my work from home situation, you know, in the bathroom. Oh boy. Don't have to move at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sure. 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 
All right. So this next one is for a facial expression. Mm. <clears throat> All right. So think about it. Three, two, one. I think it's Graham. I think it's Graham also. Maybe not though. Yeah, what? That's... Why? Your boss tells you you're done. So the what? expression you make when your boss tells you you're done early for the day. Instant nap. Well, boss, that's, yeah, that's boss, actually... boss Alexa, producer Alexa says, hey, we've got all our filming done for the day. You can cut off early. I literally collapse in my chair. That's a fair point. Eyes are closed, hands are pillowed like so that's a valid point can i you, i had my eyes closed so i kind of missed everybody else's yeah can, can you we, can we all make them again yeah okay Rob well looks more like a like a roller coaster but yeah, like a little you're trying to protect your face from very like the, scream you know the thing he's there the screen oh, yeah. what's that painting yeah yeah mm -hmm. i still think so that's I'm going for like a kid from home alone but it's not me. Mm. I know I said that last oh, time and I was oh. lying, but it's not. <laughs> okay. Two that's in just, a row feels yeah, like It's just like, hey, Rob, like, let's get out of here with nothing today. But Abby seemed very on point. So no one's, no one's immediately I, you know, really similar. I think it's, I, it's gotta be, it's gotta be G. I don't know what I can say to clear my name. All I know is I'm innocent and I'm very dedicated to telling the truth. I vote G. 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 Nope. It was me. Oh. Ah, no. Gosh dang it. I really love like that. That's your response. You just went like, they were excited. Great words. Yeah, oh, like that, man. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, shoot. Oh, that, was right. that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. a tricky one. Ridiculous. All right. Ready for round three. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. This is number of fingers again. OK. Okay. All right. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Rob just has such a delay on ours that it yeah. <laughs> Rap slowly <laughs> consults what everyone else has done, thinks about it, and makes a decision. Okay, number and then of goes hours in the exact spent opposite concept. direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would like to clear my name first since it's likely it's not me since I was just a spy, but I would still like to. I have a <laughs> Once a spy, I know. always a spy bill. I know. This is why I would like to clear my name. But I would say about five hours because my social media use has really skyrocketed recently. Oh. So around, I am guesstimating five. That's fair. I can explain my three. Uh, it's a little bit of a metaphor. I tried to sneak a zero in there too because ideally I would be spending close to zero. Um, but right now I think with the amount of time that I spend on Facebook for camp stuff, um, three over the course of an entire day, like snippets here and there feels accurate. Well, I would like to clear my name and say that um, instead of the traditional eight hours of sleep, I do seven hours of social media every night, um, just to make sure, you know, I don't leave any stone unturned. Um, so I don't touch it at all during the day night, instead of sleeping. Um, I do approximately seven hours, <laughs> one hour nap. Rob, do you want to go into your name? Yeah, I would love to. Um, I just so, so Abby and I work on an opposite schedule. So while she's on social media, I'm sleeping. And then when she's sleeping, I'll hop on the social media for that one hour. Um, and that, that balances it out. We get, we get a full eight hours between the two of us. We're able to exchange notes, compare thoughts about what we saw and read. Um, yeah, it's been a yeah. system that's worked really well for us so far. My one hour. That makes also, me in, so in totally honesty, I actually about. just gave up my social media like three days before uh, we all got locked in our houses. So 
it's been hard to not end up back counting fingers as they go up, but I've been pretty good about it so far. I believe Robert to that degree. I think it's Abby. I think it's Abby too. I think it probably I think it's Abby. sleeps. It is me. The sad part is like it's not seven, but it's probably high. So, <laughs> no. Abby, full disclosure: when I saw your number, I went, "Okay, that checks out." And then I thought maybe Grammar Bell, and like <laughs> yeah. it didn't. Yeah, like it, like it, pretty like I don't keep my screen time on my phone, but it very well could be that high. So I'm kind of glad I didn't have to consider a true answer for that one. Cool. All right, Ooh, okay. we have one. Oh, one final round. All right. <clears throat> Okay, all right. I'm gonna go up early Ready? so it looks like I go at the same Three. time. <laughs> you guys Great. gotta make a facial expression. I've already started. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Do we all have it? I think we all had it. It's the expression you make when you realize the game show is over. Oh, gosh, we're all making the My same face, sort of. Mm -hmm. I, was I think Graham was a spy because there's no way. Yeah, get out of here. Rob, you gave him that one because he said no way early. There's a blank line somewhere. Oh man! Woohoo! I think this means G deserves Oscar and is the light of everyone's lives. You're welcome. I had still one more, but this means <laughs> that this is the end of our game show. Whoa. Thank you uh -huh. for sticking with us and playing along. All of these games that we played today are games that you can play at home with people you live with. You can play them like we did. Um, through a screen. Mm -hmm. um, they're really easy to to learn and to play. This is actually, for most of these games, only the second time that we've played them. Mm -hmm. um, so they're pretty easy to pick up on. Um, we hope you enjoyed this today and that you try out some of these games. All right. Thanks for joining cool. us. Thanks, everybody. See you at live campfire tonight. Bye, y'all. See you later.